In an exclusive report from IndieWire, Martin Scorsese's $100 million gangster movie The Irishman, starring Robert De Niro, has been scooped up by Netflix and is in the process of closing a deal to release it to its 93 million subscribers in over 190 countries. The movie was going to be backed by Paramount Pictures, but after head of studio Brad Gray stepped down, Scorsese's team put together a new package. The Irishman details the life of Frank the Irishman Sheeran, a hitman best known for his supposed involvement in the death of Jimmy Hoffa. No official release date has been revealed. Jeremy, thoughts about Martin Scorsese's The Irishman debuting on Netflix? This is interesting to me. This 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 tears me in two directions. I can see this in two different ways, and that's why we li I like the table discussion, so we can all talk about it. On one, you can see it as a big move, like, oh, Netflix and the streaming services are now scooping up really big-name directors to have their movies on their platform. That's a big move. That's a big deal. That's awesome. Or you can see it as... Well, apparently, when a director makes a movie that no one watches, like Silence, even Martin Scorsese has to have his movie, his next movie, come out on a streaming platform because it's not going to get a theatrical release. So I don't know which one this falls under, but I do find it interesting uh, because, in the end, Adam Sandler's last movie, I think, came out on, on Netflix. So his last three movies yeah, came out right. on Netflix. Yeah, right. So I, I, I don't know what to see. I feel like the... Uh, lack of people who went and saw Silence is uh, really why this happened, but that's just me. Here we go. What do you guys think? I think there's a, you're right. There are a couple ways to think about it. The first one that went to me is this is an important mm -hmm. piece of news, and and here's why: because all that notwithstanding, Netflix has had major movie stars debut their movies on Netflix, but they have all been bags of shit. <laughs> I mean, it's been Adam Sandler, and those movies are the bottom of the barrel, like nearly as bad as the one where he played his own sister. Which I can't even remember. Jack, Jack and Jill. And Jack and Jill. I play Twister with your sister. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, seriously, the ones he put out on Netflix have been pretty much on par with those. They, they've been terrible. Then there was that one uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon sequel, mm -hmm. but that was like eight years after the original one, and there wasn't a lot of interest and all that kind of stuff. So this is the first. It's Scorsese. Bringing a film of his. So, regardless of anything else, that's important. Okay, going back to what you said, that's exactly what was the first thing that went through my head. It was the double whammy of, number one, this is a commentary on Gray, who's leaving Paramount, and a vote of no confidence in them that this was a bad one to go with. We don't think this one has any market appeal. We don't think this one's going to work. I'm speculating here, by the way. That they're looking at this project and saying, we don't think it has market appeal. We think it's going to do less business than what Silence was. Even if it is a good script, we don't think it's going to do any business. He's greenlit it, but he's gone now, and now we can kind of part ways with it. And, you know, going into the whole thing about, is this another matter where the producers of the film are realizing, we're not going to make bank in the theater with this. Netflix is offering us $175 million for the rights of the film, whatever. This is financially the right place to go we won't really know until we see the see the movie but whether it's for good reasons or bad reasons this is significant and important and could shake things up a lot moving forward and, and hearing the let's say the paramount did say that that we don't know if it's going to market it because it's certainly possible i can see the netflix guys doing the pacino going morons because <laughs> it's a gangster film again with scorsese and de niro and potentially pacino and this story, this changes the game because when you look at the, if you look at the, at the Adam Sandler movies and stuff that you guys are, are bringing up, you had Adam Sandler and, and a guy who was pretty much kind of flailing in the box office and he, he takes um, his friends, he puts them in movies and there's no really big stars. Scorsese, to quote Leonardo DiCaprio, is still making punk rock at his age. And when you have him again doing a gangster film, this also shows what Netflix is able to do with their budgets. The fact that how much money they make with all their TV shows, and now they're able to take it and say, we have the next Scorsese film. That is game-changing, because it, it absolutely has to deal with Scorsese, Scorsese saying to, to himself, all right, Silence didn't get the, uh, get the run that it should have. And it also says, like, well, this is a different thing. Imagine he, his, his, the limitations. He likes to work with big, like, three-hour movies yeah. and stuff, too. He can make whatever he wants to make at Netflix. Now, whether that's a good or bad thing, we'll find out. But he's going to be able to do it. And the marketing behind it. Netflix's marketing is second to none. It's incredible. You're going to get way better marketing than you got for, from this movie than you did Silence. Mm -hmm. And because of they're even, I think, that one of the, the, what Netflix is also going to do, they're going to take all the international um, distribution, they're going to do everything themselves. They're going to put 
all the eggs in this basket because this, if this works for them, getting Scorsese, you're going to see the floodgates open. More and more movies are going to go to, again, whether or not that is a good or a bad thing, that's something we'll discuss down the line. But this is something different. This is a bigger story than I think we realize. Uh, it's, 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 I realize it. I think it's massive. It's the, I was so happy to hear this news. When you say 93 million people now have the access to watch this film, 93 million people are going to watch this film. It's people who didn't go see Silence. A lot of people are not going out to the movie theaters now because of the budget, the price that it costs to go see one film. You have families having to make those decisions. You have people like, well, I can go see one movie a month. And we're, we're, we go see movies all the time. We're not in the norm where people have a budget that they have to really f figure out one movie a month, maybe two movies a month. This would not be in there. The, you're right. The Irishman, for us, or people who love gangster films, yes. But this is like unlimited freedom. Netflix, the way they operate, they just like, you do it. We're not even, we don't have a production studio. We're hiring you to make the thing. You bring it back when it's done. That's the golden ticket. I mean, this is the new Zoetrope Studios. It's called Netflix. I could see tons of amazing, talented directors flooding. I mean, they've already had out Beasts of No Nation, if you remember that film. Yeah. They had uh, Fukunaga do that film. They've already done a lot of amazing one-off films. This is just now them, now we're getting the big money because idiots like Paramount fumbled. You're exactly right. It's their loss. It's Netflix's gain. I, I don't know if I can agree with that uh, on that, with the Paramount fumbled. Look, silence. Let, we say silence. No, let's put an actual number to it. Silence made $7 million. It's, but it's office. about missionaries. Well, I mean, this I, I, is, we're no, talking about Jimmy Hoffa. But it's still, it's you know. Martin Scorsese, Liam Neeson, Andrew Garfield, with all the Academy Award buzz. And we're not saying it made $37 million. It made Seven million. Nobody dollars. wanted to see it. The I understand last that. time, Wolf of Wall Street crushed though. The yeah. last time, Wolf of Wall Street and that crushed. Was to Nesco but the last time that that uh, De Niro and Pacino made a movie together, back when anybody actually cared to see a, a, a De Niro Pacino movie together, and there's a good possibility we may see both of those guys in this movie, Night Falls. was nine years ago in Righteous Kill, and it was a horrible right. film. It was really Look, bad. They did which two made, movies back which, to back, which, which were bad. made like yeah. like thirty or forty million dollars at the U.S. box office. Now. We're nine years after that. I, look, I, I just got to say, I don't know. When you look at the recent gangster movies that have come out as well, I don't know that Paramount was wrong to think, we don't think this thing can make a lot of money at the box office at this point. When you actually look at the facts and you look at the data that's in front of them. Sure. Could it be a good move for Netflix, though? It might have been their only move to, is to go to Netflix. But here's the thing. Netflix is going to spend big money on this. The question will be, Will it actually end up paying off for them? And like I know you mentioned that 93 million on Netflix, 93 million people are going to watch it. Well, no, they're not. I sure. mean, it'll really depend. We'll have to wait and see if this works for them because they're putting out a lot of money right now to take these gambles and risks. And I love that Netflix is taking these gambles and risks. But if it doesn't work out for them, they're not going to be throwing out these 150 million dollar checks moving forward. At, at least a year or two from now, unless it works. But that's why, because it's such an interesting risk, that this is really significant news. This is big. Yes. If a Scorsese film can go to Netflix, and if it can work on Netflix, then absolutely the predict the situation you described is going to happen. And I do agree with you. I'm not saying, like, when I say Paramount Fumble, that's my opinion. I yeah. do agree that they were like, look, the money that we can make back in the theater they probably they ran some numbers, and we're probably not going to do what we what we need to do to make this money back. For Netflix, it's already a done deal. They have a subscription yeah. base, so they can take those kinds of chances that big studios can't. We also don't know if Paramount actually said all this stuff, right. too, because remember, the other thing is, too, Scorsese has also been, minus this year, has been a guy that you put a movie out and you're going to get some potential Oscar nominations, which brings a lot of recognition yeah. to, to the studios. Now, if Netflix does do this, this is potential what they could do and they release it in a couple of theaters in December. Oh, they will. They can be, they will. And they, they're going to, they could be Potentially have a best Oscar, a best picture winner, or at least nominee if things go right. Next year, if you're going to be see as that, good yeah. as Righteous Kill. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh, wait. I don't know why you brought that up.